Hello and welcome to your dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International. We're coming to you live from Glasgow, Scotland. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Samantha Ritchie. Firstly, we'd like to apologise to you for being off the air for the past few days. We haven't been broadcasting our daily outrages. However, we have a really good excuse. We uh, participated in the Global Labour Institute International Summer School in Barnsley in uh, South Yorkshire, um, where 20, um, more than 100 trade union activists from 25 different countries got together to discuss some of the crucial issues facing the trade union movement. It was an absolutely fantastic and inspiring event and we'll have uh, a lot more content on our website that came out of that event over the next few days. Um, but uh, that is why we didn't, we didn't publish Daily Outrage. We were, we were very, very busy um, live streaming that event and we hope that some of you had the opportunity to participate. Um, Sam, what's happening in Greece? Um, well, on Tuesday, well, in, um, 30,000 people took to the streets of Greece to protest against austerity, which has taken mm -hmm. place in the country. Um, but unfortunately, last night at midnight, um, the Greek government passed a bill which effectively puts 25,000 public sector jobs into a pool whereby they have to find another job or be reassigned within mm -hmm. eight months or they lose their job completely. But unfortunately, by 2014, it's expected that 11,000 Greek employees are actually going to lose their job. Um, despite this, um, there was um, a school guard outside who was sobbing while it was going, it was quite, quite vivid images of him being upset and saying, how can they just end all my career? I've worked here for 12 years. But despite this, they just sat for me in one night and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, what's more fundamental is they're still making these austerity measures and they're still continuing to punish uh, working employees um, in the public sector. But the IMF told them in May that they have to address tax evasion and the rich and get them to pay more fairly in society mm -hmm. because that's still an issue. And getting more the taxes in check would actually stop the austerity mm -hmm. measures coming to light. So... Um, it's, it's quite... Yeah, so an, an awful situation in uh -huh. Greece continues and uh, I mean it seems that they've learned nothing from austerity. The German finance minister I believe is visiting very soon. Coincidentally, it's be tonight. Coincidentally, today. Uh, yeah. big protests against that. Um, and something else that came out of Greece recently which is also really bad news and that is that the Greek government will be reintroducing involuntary HIV testing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll remember that last year there was the big scandal about the uh, the women who were tested for HIV against their will by the Greek government and those who were found positive were actually arrested and uh, we participated in the making of a documentary about this. Yeah. It's a terrible breach of, of human rights and uh, the Greek government has learned nothing from this because they've reinstated that policy and they're going to continue mm -hmm. involuntary HIV testing. So real crisis in Greece, um, hu human crisis, humanitarian crisis and definitely an economic crisis. Yeah. It's taking control of someone else's body and telling them, mm -hmm. dictating to them what they're going to do. And that just leads yep. us on to um, American abortion law change, which took place last week. And it's called SB5. And um, so um, the senator um, stood up and she um, campaigned and stood in for 11 hours straight and stated why that this abortion law should not um, come to light. Her name was Wendy Davis. And unfortunately, Texas voted to bring in this law, um, which many Republicans supported, mm -hmm. um, and has made that um, this means that you can't have an abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy. Um, 37 out of the 42 clinics will be shut in Texas, and you have to have surgical status in order to um, carry out abortions, mm -hmm. which um, this means that although they've shut down the clinics, it's actually stopping poorer people mm. from getting access to this sort of services, which is wrong because the rich can travel, they can go elsewhere, they can mm. get the the treatment that, that they need. But I think this is so wrong in so many different levels because women should be in charge of their own bodies. It shouldn't be up to a government to dictate mm. when they decide if they feel that they need to have an abortion or there could be other circumstances, there could be raped, there mm -hmm. so many different circumstances and it's not the government's place to carry out this. But this leads us on to talk about um, the US government is actually admitted to carrying out um, 3,400 and six um, sterilizations between 1973 and 1976 against um, American Indian women. And also in North Carolina, they st sterilized 7,600 between 1929 and 1974. I think that's really the biggest hypocrisy because yeah. they can't turn around and say, oh, you can't have an abortion, we'll stop you, but we carried out sterilizations mm. because 
like as a quote, they were feeble minded or undesirable and that is just disgusting as far as I'm concerned because they can't turn around and say, oh, no abortion, but we'll sterilise you because you're undesirable or mm-hmm. you're feeble-minded. There's mm-hmm. just no there's no voice for women yeah. there and they're just I taking guess. it away. And more women are not taking um, birth control in, the, in Texas. The, mm-hmm. the statistics is going down and women are not coming forward, so more women are getting pregnant. And mm-hmm. it's th- although Wendy Davis did is... Um, she had a teenage pregnancy and stuff mm-hmm. and she went to Harvard and she's apparently some sort of role model mm-hmm. but um, she believes that people should have the right and that is fundamental mm-hmm. so yeah so women's women's right to choose their own uh, their own reproductive future yeah. completely limited in Texas um, now today of course is Mandela Day it's the 95th anniversary yeah. 95th birthday of Nelson Mandela but it's also a, a, a day recognized by the United Nations so Mandela Day is the day when the United Nations calls on people to be inspired by Nelson Mandela and by his legacy and by what he did and they say that uh, Nelson Mandela spent 67 years of his life committed to social justice and fighting for a better world and they ask you to, co- to start by committing just 67 minutes and uh, I think that's a call that we all, yeah. we all need to do because, uh, you know, not, not everyone is a Mandela, not everyone needs to be a Mandela. We don't all have to be these great inspirational leaders, but the, the world changes when ordinary people get together and do something about it. And mm-hmm. uh, it's really important to, to be an activist and to do something and to commit to making the world a better place because um, sitting at home and complaining about things doesn't yeah. make it better. A little bit of activism carried out by a lot of people makes a, makes a substantial difference. So this is our challenge from USI to you, is uh, wherever you are, uh, commit 67 minutes of your life to, to making the world a better place, getting active on something, and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, let's, let's build together and make, make yeah. things better. Um, and uh, finally, just a, a little bit of what seems like it might be good news coming out of Egypt. Um, obviously, we've seen the chaos that erupted from um, the, the mass protests and uh, President Morsi being forced to step down and the Supreme Council for the Armed Forces taking over. We were really worried about what this would mean for democracy. Um, in the short term, there are what looks like it might be, might be a good sign, might be a positive sign, and that is the fact that the new Labour Minister for Egypt uh, has just been appointed, and his name is Kamal Abu Aita and uh, he's the president of the uh, Egyptian Independent Federation of, of Unions. Um, those were the anti-Mubarak uh, free trade unions that, that were organizing. Um, he's a trade union activist who goes, whose, whose activist career goes uh, back a long time. He fought against the regime, so we see it as a good sign yeah. that uh, um, a trade unionist who was part of the revolution has been made Labour Minister of Egypt. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean everything is resolved and everything's going to be fine from now on, but uh, we hope that this means that uh, that finally Egyptian workers will get proper representation and also that their rights will be protected by law and uh, that, that Egyptian e- Egypt will recognize ILO core standards. Um, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you once again for watching or listening to this dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International.